Hi, this is a brief introduction to the Tangent Mapper and how to use it to generate customised user control layouts for Tangent Panels. First I should explain the difference between the Tangent Mapper and the Tangent Hub, both of which are installed at the same time. The Tangent Hub runs silently in the background and provides the communication between the physical panels and the software applications that you're controlling. The Tangent Mapper is the interface you use to modify control layouts for each application. The Tangent Hub runs all the time, while the Mapper only needs to be opened when making changes. This video is a very quick introduction to the Mapper. For more details, you should see our Mapper Made Simple document or even the full user manual. Before opening the Mapper, you should make sure you have a panel connected and also your application running. If you do, then the mapper should spring to life immediately, showing the control layout for your application and panel combination. For this example, we're using a Tangent Wave 2 panel with Adobe Premiere. You can tell that the panel is connected to Premiere by looking at the title bar of the mapper. Any panels which are connected will appear as downward tabs along the top of the window. You can see here that we only have a Wave 2 connected. In the main part of the window, you'll see a visual representation of the panel with buttons, knobs, trackables in the same position as the real thing. Next to each control, you'll see a small lozenge. If there's text in this area, then that will show the function which the control is operating. In addition to controlling many different applications, each control on a panel can perform many different functions within each application. To achieve this, the first important idea to cover is our concept of modes. Modes are how we refer to a collection of controls which relate to whatever you're currently doing in the application. For example, in Premiere, each of the sections within the Lumetri color grading tool are mirrored in the panel as modes. You'll find these modes in the tabs along the top of the mapper window. As I click through each mode tab, you'll see that many of the control assignments change to perform functions which relate to the corresponding Lumetri section. It's important to realise that as I view different modes in the mapper, the panel won't change. The mapper will never drive the mode of the physical panel, so clicking on these tabs just lets you view how controls are assigned. You need to change mode from within Premiere or from the panel for the other to also change. You can see here that if I click through the Lumetri sections on the screen, you'll see that the mapper modes also change. If I press the function keys on the panel, which are assigned to change mode, then the corresponding Lumetri section opens up on the screen. If I change mode on a panel or Premiere, then the mapper will follow as a convenience. It assumes that you're most likely to want to make changes to the mode which is currently active. If you do click away from the active mode in the mapper, then you can still see which mode is active on the panel by this small indicator on the mode tab. When you first start an application, the control layout you see, or map as we call it, will be the default supplied by either the application manufacturer or by tangent. This default map should include a useful collection of controls which means that you can get started straight away, but it should also be a useful starting point to create a custom layout or map of your own. At the end of the mode tabs, you'll see that a more button has appeared. This indicates there are more modes available than can be seen all at once. Sometimes you'd like to assign more functions within a particular mode than there are physical controls. This is where our next concept, banks, comes in. You'll notice that there are bank labels next to the knobs and buttons on the Wave 2 panel. This indicates that these controls can have multiple banks of functions within each mode. In Premiere's default map, there's an example of banking in the editing mode. You'll see here that the soft button area is showing bank 1 of 2. Clicking on the small arrow switches to showing the functions which are assigned to these buttons in the second bank, so it now shows bank 2 of 2. Unlike modes which can be changed by the application, banks are always selected from the panel. This means that bank selection requires a button to be mapped to cycle through the banks which are available. In this example, the up and down arrow buttons are mapped to next knob 
and next button banks. This is probably a good time to explain how different areas of the panel tend to be mapped. These aren't hard rules, but just guidelines on how to configure default layouts. Users are then able to make changes as they wish. Controls on the right side of the Wave 2 panel tend to be set to navigation functions to drive the timeline with the transport keys and jog dial and switch modes and application workspaces using the function keys. The up and down arrow keys can be used to cycle through modes or change knob and button banks as appropriate. The Alt key on the left of the panel is normally permanently mapped to the alternate function, which we'll cover shortly. All these navigation controls tend to remain constant through all modes, and none of these controls can be banked. The rest of the controls on the panel, the trackable, soft buttons and soft knobs, can change their function depending on the mode selected, and the knobs and buttons around the displays at the top of the panel can also be banked, as we just covered. The third way that a control can perform a different function is through the alternate mapping feature. This operates in much the same way as the command or control keys on your computer keyboard. When you hold down a special button, the other controls switch to perform alternate functions. In the bottom left corner of the mapper is an indicator to show whether you are currently viewing the standard or alternate mappings for all the controls. I can click this indicator to toggle back and forth between the two. These are the standard controls and these are the alternate controls. If we now look at the physical panel, you'll see that when the Alt button is pressed and released, the function of the soft buttons change. The functions of the soft knobs don't appear to change but there's something subtle going on which we'll cover shortly. In much the same way as the mapper's mode follows the panel's mode, the mapper's standard alternate state also follows the panel. You can see that here. Something which is specific to the Premier default map is that the soft buttons all have mode specific functions in standard mode, but their alternate mappings are all mapped to editing functions in all modes. So that covers the basics, how to navigate around the mapper and what to expect when changing mode, bank or pressing the Alt button. Now we'll take a look at how to make changes to the functions assigned to each control. When I click on a control, this opens the control mapping window where we can inspect the functions which are assigned to that control. You'll see that there are separate sections for the standard mapping and for the alternate mapping. For buttons, the options are simple. You just choose the action which you'd like the button to perform from this menu here, and you also have the option to override the suggested display label. If you'd like the same action to be assigned to both the standard and alternate functions, then you can press this button to copy the standard action over. Pressing it again will allow you to manually select a different action. By default, actions you choose are only applied for the currently selected mode and bank but you can choose to ripple them through to other modes and or banks from this menu. If you do select one of the options here, you'll be shown a warning to let you know that you're about to overwrite functions in other modes or banks. So I'll just cancel as I don't want to do that right now. Programming a knob control is very similar to programming a button. For this example, I'll change to a mode that has an unused knob to map. If I click one of the unassigned knobs, then you'll see that the control mapping window looks very similar to before, with a menu to choose the parameter which you'd like to control. I'll choose Creative Saturation from the Lumetri section. I'm happy to leave the suggested display label, and you can see that the knobs have two extra settings. The display type lets you choose how the parameter value is reported on the panel display. I can choose between blank, number, bar graph, and percentage. The encoder sensitivity slider lets you define how sensitive the knob is to movements. Find control to the left means that movements of the knob result in small changes to the parameter, while choosing course to the right causes large changes to the parameter. You'll see that the slider is however greyed out and the global box is ticked. This is the default situation which occurs when you map a parameter to a knob. It means that the control is picking up its sensitivity from the map's global sensitivity settings rather than being overridden from this window. As I mentioned before, in Premiere, all the knob controls have the same function set for both their standard and alternate mappings. 
the only difference between the two being the sensitivity. We can recreate this here by clicking the link button. This copies over the parameter, the label and the display type, but you'll see that the sensitivity is different. The global box is still ticked, but the value is different as it is also being picked up from the map's global sensitivity settings. In this configuration, the standard mapping has the sensitivity set to medium, so fairly fine control is available. However, the alternate mapping is set to coarse, so that it's easy to move quickly through a parameter's range when large adjustments are required. You can hopefully see this when I adjust our new saturation control. I have fine control by default, but pressing the Alt button allows me to change the parameter value from minimum to maximum with a single rotation of the knob. If you ever need to adjust the global sensitivity values, then you can do this from the Control Map Settings dialog. When I make adjustments to the knob sensitivities in here, all controls which have the global box ticked will change. You can see that the changes are applied to the knob that I'm currently editing. I do have the option to override the global settings for this particular control by unchecking the global box and unlinking the standard and alternate mappings. Then I can adjust all aspects of the standard and alternate mappings independently, including the sensitivities. You've probably already noticed that all the changes you make in the control mapping window are applied immediately to the panel. There's no need to confirm the changes you make. You may be wondering where to define the function of the knob reset button. There's actually no need to do this, as the knob button is always mapped to reset the parameter which the knob is controlling. The last thing to cover is the mapping of trackables. If you click on a trackable, then you'll see that the whole control is highlighted rather than just the ball or the dial. This offers a quick way to assign a function to the combined three-way control rather than having to map each axis separately. In this mode, the middle trackable is unassigned, so I'll choose Lumetri, Colour Wheels, Midtones. Then you'll see that the three parameters have been applied to the three axes. As the trackables have no associated displays on the Wave 2 panel, there's no space for a label or display type. However, these will appear when mapping element panels. When you're viewing a combined control like this, then the dial and ball sensitivities are both displayed. As with other controls, you can link the alternate function to the standard function, and once again the global sensitivities will be applied by default. If you did prefer to map individual parameters to the three trackable axes, then you can do that too, either from the menu or by clicking on the control label lozenge. The last thing to do is to save out our map as it's currently live but unsaved, as you'll see from the word modified after the file name in the title bar. While changes you make to the map are applied immediately, there is no auto save function, so you must manually save the new map if you want to retain the changes you've made for the next time you run this application. You can do this from the file menu by choosing save or save as. We're actually editing the factory default map right now, and this can't be overwritten, so choosing Save will also prompt for a new name. That covers the basics of how to navigate through the mapper and how to make some changes. There's a whole lot more you can do using this tool, so check out our written guides in the links. Thanks for watching, 